Hey everybody, welcome back to Planet Coaster College. Today I'll be talking about the Larson Superloop coaster and showing you how to build one. Although, just a quick note, you might also know it by its in-game name, the Hellion Ring. And also, before I'm actually going to show you how to build this coaster, I want to spend quite a few minutes just explaining some background information behind this coaster and all sorts of useless information about the theme park industry that you probably didn't want to have in the first place and maybe you're just here for a beginner tutorial about Planet Coaster but you know I'm just gonna give you all of this information anyway. So um, about the Larson Superloop coaster, it's one of the most interesting coasters in the world I think. Uh, it's it's very popular among theme park enthusiasts and roller coaster enthusiasts uh, because it does a lot of loop de loops and generally there are many different factors in roller coasters that uh, you know theme park and roller coaster enthusiasts factor into their enjoyment of the rides and of a park um, but really the amount of times that a coaster goes upside down is generally considered to be the best measure of how good a roller coaster is and so when you'll find somebody standing in the queue of a roller coaster and they're really boasting about how many loop-de-loops that coaster has chances are that they are a theme park enthusiast or a roller coaster enthusiast because that is what these people are really into now you'll have some of the general general public kind of uh, saying some stuff about airtime, uh, things like that. That isn't really too important, it's all about how many times you go upside down. And going upside down is something that the Larson Superloop, also known as the Fireball nowadays, uh, though many people just call it the Larson Looper because there's alliteration in that name, I suppose. Um, but that ride does it quite a bit and because of that it is very often seen as one of the most popular rides in the world. In fact, uh, when there was still um, the Mitch Hawker poll, which wasn't really a good poll for measuring how good roller coasters were. The Larson Looper didn't really get anywhere, but now we have the Golden Ticket Awards, which is a great way to measure how good parks are and how good roller coasters are. And um, almost every year, the Larson Super Loop coaster is number one on the ticket poll. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's pretty certain to say that this is among the best roller coasters in the world and, and very, uh, very much liked by roller coaster enthusiasts especially. One of the other reasons, by the way, why that is so, uh, is because credits play a very large role in roller coaster enthusiast communities. Uh, you might have heard of these. Uh, credits are something that you get on every roller coaster uh, that you ride, and it's, it's kind of like the, the roller coaster enthusiast with the highest amount of credits uh, is kind of like the best roller coaster enthusiast, if, if that is a way to put it. So they're all kind of like fighting for the amount of credits. Now, the amount of credits that you get per ride kind of depends on how good that ride is. Like, what is the reputation of that ride? Are you going to ride a B&M, like, say, um, is it something like Kraken at SeaWorld? that's only worth about three credits because it really isn't that interesting. Um, but say you're gonna ride a Vekoma SLC, which is upside down and actually has multiple loop-de-loops as well, that's gonna be worth like 20 credits. Uh, and so you'll see that roller coaster enthusiasts wanna ride the rides to give them all of these credits. And this is also one of the reasons why these Larson Super Loops are so popular because it gives you one credit for every time you go upside down and they go upside down about 30 times. Uh, so that's 30 credits per Larson and super looper and that's why they're really the best way to gain credits anyway um that was the story behind the ride i think it's about time that we start actually um uh what was it um did i um yeah did i talk yet about the fact that these are very popular among six flags parks um now six flags parks you might know are some of the um th there's some of the uh, ooh that there, there's some of the there, there's some of the parks that are very very like not so well themed per se uh, but theming isn't too necessary it's it's more about you know uh, how, how thrilling is the parks they're, they're really one of the, one of the parks that that focus on those bare thrills which is why they're really some of the most popular parks and some of the most well-respected parks out there. And especially recently, Six Flags Parks have been buying a lot of these Larson Superloop coasters. And um, so many of them have them at this point uh, that they're really like increasing their coaster counts by quite a lot with all of these Superloops, uh, which is one of the reasons why they're really seen as the park to go to if you want to ride a roller coaster. Anyway, uh, th that was just some more information about some theme parks. I think it's, it's, it's really time 
to get into building the Larson Super Loop or, you know, the Larson Fireball or the Larson Looper or, as it's called in-game, the Hellion Ring. I think it's time to finally build this thing and, and actually show you how to build a good layout for a Larson Super Looper and also show you how you can, um, you know, actually get this thing in in a nice way, maybe set it up with some sight lines, kind of present it as the main icon of attraction in whatever area you're building it in, uh, so that you're, you're going to be able to make sure that the entire area kind of works with the placement of the ride as well, that the composition is right. Um, so yeah, with all of that in mind, and with all of the things that I, I just told you about this coaster, I think it's... Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty good time to start building this ride. Um, so, um, yeah, one thing that you do want to pay attention to with this ride is that you want to um, make sure that you can actually find it. So, if, if you're going to go to click on rides over here, you can actually find the Hellion Ring right here. And uh, be careful not to click on any of these other rides, by the way. Uh, that'll make sure that you are not going to place the Larson Superloop. Uh, so you really have to click on this icon right here. Uh, so you have to hover your mouse over it and then uh, click the left mouse button, if I'm correct. Um, yeah, that should be it. And click that mouse button. And there we go. And that is pretty much our entire layout for the Larson Super Loop done. Um, now you just want to be very careful with how you place this thing. Uh, again, it really has a huge impact on the entire surroundings. Uh, you can kind of tell already uh, that it really changes the, the general appearance of the area around it. And I always find that really important. Like, what are your sight lines? Uh, how does the entire area come together? How does uh, ending this ride ha help the composition of this area to be more strong? and to really draw your attention toward this Larson Looper. And you can see it's really working right now. Like, uh, when you look at this, your attention is straight going to the Larson Looper. Uh, so that's that's really good already. Um, and I think we can even raise this thing up maybe a little bit. Um, let's see. Something like that should be pretty good. I'm not entirely sure why exactly I'm talking about the height that you should be raising the ride. Um, but, you know, I, I like to talk a bit more about some useless details that you might not want to hear about in the first place. Um, but, you know, who has time to make beginner tutorials when you can just go into theme park knowledge way too deeply? So, yeah, I think it's time to start placing the ride. Something like that should work. There we go. And now let's test the ride and see if it's actually going to make the layout. I'm not quite sure if it's actually fast enough to make this hill on the top here, uh, since it's quite high. Uh, so let's see. Uh, it's getting there, slowly but surely, and I think we're almost going to make it on almost the next round. Not quite. There we go. So now it's doing all of the loop-de-loops. There we go. Um, that was about 30 in one direction and then 30 in the other direction as well, um, which is really great. And um, yeah, that's basically this ride. Now, I think it's very important to test it as well. So I'm just going to very quickly place some simple paths and trees, and I'll be back with you in a second. So this is what the ride looks like in its finished state, and I'm quite happy with it. I think there could still be some slight changes to it, like some other elements, maybe a combination of two different immelments. Something like that might be fun to mess around with. But generally, I am really happy with how the ride turned out. I think the most important thing, of course, is getting that layout right. Obviously, I kind of skipped the, the part where I placed the trees and the paths, uh, but the, the crucial elements of the coaster, of course, is getting the layout right. For some reason, realism is really important to me and I like to talk about these coasters as if I was building an actual coaster, like based on the way that actual manufacturers make them. Not entirely sure why, because it just kind of seems all a bit ridiculous anyway. But, you know, it doesn't really matter because the end result, I think, uh, looks quite good, as you can tell uh, by this thing right here. And, um, yeah, that is basically all I wanted to say for this episode of Planet Coaster College. I hope you... That was my pen. 
Um, sorry about that, but I hope you enjoyed this episode. I definitely hope you learned something uh, from it as well. Not just how you can build this coaster in Planet Coaster, which might have been what you were coming from, um, but maybe also what this coaster actually is and why it's so great and part of why theme parks are so amazing and why roller coasters are so uh, fascinating the way everything works. Um, I might be getting a little bit too serious there. Yeah, um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and learned something from it. Stay tuned for the next Planet Coaster College where, if I remember correctly, we're gonna work on the Genie roller coaster right here, uh, which is also a really amazing roller coaster, very popular around the planet. And while it doesn't go upside down, it does spin a lot. So that's kind of like going upside down, but then sideways. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something from this. Uh, remember to, um, no, I'm not gonna say that. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you later guys. Peace.